With over 11,000 cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh! training card game, it's impossible to know every single one of them. With this series, I'll be trying to shed some lights on cards that didn't register on anyone's radar, so let's find Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Unpolished Gems. Hello everyone, Jekyll here and I welcome you to Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Unpolished Gems, a series introducing or reintroducing a certain card and analyzing its possible usage as a tech. Today we're going to look into a card that can be useful nowadays, but it will most likely shine in the future after Power of the Elements is released. So without further ado, let's talk about the upcoming disasters. While the band plays on. Before we do though, remember to like, comment and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'm on a road to 1000 subs and you can make it happen. I have a special event planned for this with more details arriving later. Now back to the topic at hand. And the band played on is a continuous trap card released in Primal Origin all the way back in May 2014. The card almost instantly saw competitive viability in various side decks in play in regional NYCS tops during that year. Afterwards it only saw play in March 2015's regionals in Charlotte and OTS Championship. Since then the card hasn't been seen at all in the competitive metagame. Some of you might be wondering, why is this the topic of today's video? Well, with the upcoming release of Power of the Elements in August this year and if the OCG metagame is anything to note, the Splite archetype from that set might be a very strong meta contender. While there are many cards that can help with that specific matchup, I don't think any are as devastating as this one. It all boils down to the card's effect which makes it so neither player can special summon monsters of the same level and rank as the ones they control, meaning that a 2-axis focus deck like Splite won't be able to special summon any monsters, making it basically unplayable. When it comes to the pros of this card, it's very simple, it's a floodgate and it's an instant win in various matchups since it prevents the basic mechanic of the game, and that is special summoning. The biggest downside of this card is the fact it's an unsearchable floodgate with a very niche usage. Yes, it can win you some games, but it can also lose you others. Due to that, I don't don't think it's going to see much play in the upcoming months. Additionally, remember that the card prevents special summons and doesn't interact with the cards currently on the field, meaning that the activation timing is also extremely important. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the card was released in Primal Origin in May 2014 as a common with a reprint in the 2015 Megatons. With that information, it's rather easy to deduce that the cost of acquiring this musical monstrosity won't be very high, with an average price of one dollar for the 2015 Megaton Common and one and a half for the Primal Origins one. However, if you like shiny cardboard, the ultra rare from Primal Origins Deluxe Edition is your pick, with an average price of three and a half buck. This card can be used in basically any side deck, since I don't think it's a good main deck option. However, this might change depending on how the TCG metagame shapes up after Power of the Elements gets released. I strongly suggest using it in a deck that doesn't revolve around the same levels or ranks of monsters, so it's only hindering the opponent's lines of play. And with that we're finishing this concert. What do you think about the card? Leave your comments below and if you have any suggestions on what should I tackle for this series, leave those there as well. This has been Jacobo and I'm signing out. Peace!